want to do a quick little video showing how I use Inkscape as kind of my um, design platform when I'm making up planes. I've been using it now for a lot of years and um, it's pretty nice. Um, so basically uh, I had an 8 foot something I wanted to make 8 feet. And I was like, well, how about a slope sword? Looks like one of these classic zaggy wings. So I took that into Inkscape. And the first thing I did is I just made this um, and made it 8 feet. And then I brought in the picture and just sized it up till it fit. And then uh, traced out one of the sides. So that would be a four foot section. And then this is basically what I print out here. All I did was measure, you know, the root, the tip, the sweep, uh, the width. Um, and then what I did was I found this MH32 airfoil online. And I basically brought it in and I sized it up so that it matched. And this is why you, when I'm using Inkscape, you, you do everything in real world. If I printed this out in poster mode in the PDF printer, this would be, you would measure it. This would actually be 688. So that's why I can bring this over here and put it right on there and, you know, size it up to match that. And then when I print this out, this will be the template that I use for my hot wire cutting. Uh, and essentially these are the two things that I'm going to print out. This I'm going to print out just 8.5 by 11. I just reference these things when I'm marking my foam. And this I will print out full size. Then <clears throat> I take those numbers uh, onto one of many CG calculators. Plug those numbers in. Kind of guess at a weight that's probably high. And the main thing I'm looking at here is the CG, which is going to be 386 millimeters back from the nose. <clears throat> and that's really important to know before you start building because most of the points where the plane wants to break is going to be along, you know, that's where all that pressure is going to be when you dive up, dive down. So usually you want to you want to put a some spars, some type of reinforcing in that area you know, before you finish the plane. So that's why I always get that number way early. Uh, and then later on, you'll I'll come back to that and put in the actual weight and figure out wing loading and that kind of stuff. And then the other thing with hot wire cutting that I'll do is I'll take that shape and I'll continue these lines all the way down to where they meet. Uh, and this point here this is going to be the pivot point um, where I attach my hot wire. Sometimes when you're trying to place the foam in position, you'll be pulling um, your hot wire and you'll be trying to like, okay, I got this, this matched up perfectly. And then you bring it over here and it's like way off. And then you adjust the foam to match this. And then now this side's off. So <clears throat> measuring this ahead of time, I already cut this wing out, so I know I actually used my own measurement here, 1426, and I put the leading edge tip at that distance and just lined that up, and I brought it over here, and I just had to play with it for about 20 or 30 seconds, and I had this piece locked into position, put weights on it. So anyways, those are just a couple of my quick little tips. That's kind of how I use uh, Inkscape and have been using it for a while. Um, now, if you're going to do something like some weird multi-paneled wing, this will also do other things. Uh, there's actually um, extensions up here that you can use to figure out the uh, square inches or, you know, whatever measurement you want to figure out the wing area of a weird shape. In this case, I didn't need it because on online calculators will do that for you once you plug it in here. So, anyways... Quick little video on how I've, oh yeah, and the other thing I'll do is I'll start bringing in graphics and just overlaying them and trying to figure out what I want to do for my pictures and stuff. And so this is just kind of like my little idea file and um, I can just, as I progress, start adding more stuff to it. So 
Anyways, that's it. Later.